figure that will have you hooked. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys Disney Mirrorverse Captain Hook. Captain Hook has always been an extravagantly vengeful pirate who lives life on the edge, but now his intense hypervigilance has been amplified even further so he can perceive the minutest of flaws and weaknesses in others and strike them where it hurts the most. Before we begin, let's measure off Captain Hook here. Does anyone, by the way, hear a ticking sound? Maybe it's just me. We're going to take the tape measure right to the very top of the head I go, and while I'm doing this as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarland Toys. They did provide the sample of the Disney Mirrorverse Captain Hook. We can have a look at this review. This is actually marking the first time we've looked at a Mirrorverse figure on this channel, but it won't certainly be the last. Up to the very feathered hat I go, Captain Hook stands about 7.5 inches in height, or the figure's about 19 centimeters tall. As for Captain Hook's accessories, though, the figure comes in clue with a trading card, sword, and display stand. First, let's have a look at the display stand. Yes, it is the same circular stand that we're used to seeing here, but nowhere to be found on the stand is actually printing anything. Normally, of course, you'd have the DC logo what, right about here, or you'd have the Mortal Kombat logo about here, or you'd have as well the Spawn logo about here. But in this case, you're actually getting nothing. It's just a blank display stand. It's not necessarily the case where they always need to be printing something on there, but it certainly does unfortunately mean I can't pss, brand anything here in the review. There's one single peg that's going to work quite well for Captain Hook as he's going to have a little of a harder time to stand. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. In the meantime, though, the figure also comes included with a trading card. The trading card here for Disney Mirrorverse Captain Hook so it indicates that's a melee character. And then on the back, it shows his stats. Attack, I guess, would be 8 out of 10. Defense, 3 out of 10. Targeting, I guess, would be 4 of 10. And health is 4 out of 10. The read-up, you can also read for yourself. Just pause the video if you certainly would like. But it also is the same thing I read at the beginning of this video. So you don't even have to do that. Nice little image, by the way, of Captain Hook there on the front. Or on the back. It's different from the one that they actually use for the front of the card. Nice looking card, though. I'm going to put that to the side. Figure also comes in clue with a sword. Did you just say Sword. Figure comes included with a sword. I always like to overpronounce swords. What's rather interesting about this sword is that you can see that there's some teeth serving certainly as a guard to his hand, but he has this row of teeth that's making, making up pretty much the parameter here of the guard. Now, I wonder where those teeth are coming from, indicated by probably the rest of the costume that we're going to be looking at in a moment. Might be one of the reasons we don't hear the ticking sound any further. I love the coloring of the sword, though. The use of the gold is so nice here in this. And then, of course, as the hilt goes, it's the only thing that's a little bit not as extravagant. It's more of kind of a reddish brown. Maybe you got a little bit of gold there on the end. Uh, again, a very narrow looking kind of uh, Spanish sword, like a swashbuckling sword. It's a pretty soft plastic. It doesn't fit anywhere on the figure. There's no holster or anything like that, so you really only have the option, considering right, Captain Hook only has one hand. Not that he always needs someone to remind him, but it really then, then means, unfortunately, there's only one hand to actually have him holding the sword. It's this one right here. Yeah, probably somebody was hoping I was going to give him a multiple choice question. The, the answer was this hand. So let's go ahead and remove this from hand. We're going to just put this to the side for right now and get a closer look at Captain Hook. Yeah, one of the reasons why you're probably not hearing a ticking sound anymore probably would be by what he's now outfitted himself with. What's left of the, I think it was an alligator, wasn't it? Or was it a crocodile? I think it was a crocodile. You see, he has at least the head there on his shoulders. And all the rest of the crocodile making up, adorning his body. Now, I imagine that would be pretty hot and probably hard to move as well. I've never really had the chance to wear alligator or crocodile skin. I don't think I would be either. But I love the coloring that they actually would have put in there kind of darker swamp colors greens and then you've got a little bit of browns added in there as well i love the idea that they actually put the head there on the shoulder i think that's such a cool touch he's also got uh, i guess spikes probably possibly even teeth there sticking out the other side there as well uh, this by the way is a softer plastic uh, not the body necessarily but like the spikes at least are more of a softer plastic and he's also got this down his sleeve as well this guy's all about showing his defeated foe of course when it comes to his face sculpt couldn't have picked a better Captain Hook, I feel. you got a big smirk there on his face. These giant whiskers. Look at the mustache on this guy. I would say maybe like the skin tone that they've chose for Captain here might be a little on the tad dark side. 
I probably would have made nicer. Like, even just to compare it with the card, for example. The card has definitely him depicted with a more fair skin. And he goes more a little more darker when it comes to the actual figure. Just if they have maybe brought the lighter colors up just a little bit on the skin tone. And that, I just love the head sculpt on Captain Hook. Smug to the end. That's the way Captain Hook should always be. Of course, he does have this very large rimmed hat. The hat does not appear to be removable, although it's a softer plastic that they would have used. They've got some nice yellow added in there. Of course, the big giant. Would that be a feather? I don't What would that exactly be? It would probably be made up of maybe hairs. He's got like just a hair hat on the top of his hat. Very cool, though. He's got all this nice purple that they would have used. And it looks like it's likely molded here in purple rather than actually going and painting it. He's got some nice coloring, though, overall for his suit. One high color on the one side. Obviously, it's a little harder to fold down a collar when you've got a big, giant crocodile head there on the side of your shoulder. So resulting in that, you got one collar that sticks up, one collar that drapes down on the other side of his body. Again, kind of a softer plastic that they would have used. Just a great-looking figure. And, of course, living up to his name, say Captain Hook does have himself quite a nice-looking hook as well. It's a soft plastic like the sword we looked at before. In fact, it's actually a very similar color that they would have used also for the hook that they did for the blade as well. Like the use of the colors that they've used, kind of more of a tomato orange. Would tomatoes really be described as orange? Maybe not. But it's kind of more of an orangey red that they certainly would have used. Uh, again, he's got some nice kind of more of a mustard yellow there on the cuffs of his sleeves. Nice yellow, again, running down the front of his jacket. And also trimming off nicely at the bottom of his, of his jacket as well. Really nice additional texturing that they've also added in there as well. Of course, you've got lots of... I think this is more teeth than one crocodile would have. Yet he actually has just a, a row of it on both the sides of his jacket. And again, you got some nice texturing there on the jacket itself. The, the only thing about this figure is like his feet. His feet, just because even though he has really a long part of his foot on the front and a, a small heel here on the back, I find he's a little harder to stand. So, of course, it's good to make then use of the display stand that comes included with the figure. The peg holes are actually rather not here, but further back, closer to the heel, because the figure does have some toe articulation. Speaking of articulation, let's go ahead and look at that right now. Head sculpt for Captain Hook seems to be on a bulge, right? <laughs> As I'm moving the head back and forth, I keep squeezing his hat here. That's probably ticking him right off. The head seems to go up only just by a little bit. Looks down also just by a little bit. And you can also rock it back and forth just by a little bit. The shoulders, as you can probably imagine, are going to be a little more limited on this side because he's got a big giant head there. This arm, on the other hand, or on the other arm, does actually hinge out at about 90 degrees. Just a little less than that. You can take the arms and move forward. You can also as well move them back. Figure has, in this case, a double hinge on the elbow. He has articulation also in the hook. So you can rotate it, if, you know, again, to get the angle that you want. Maybe if he's holding, for example, a drink, a beverage, you can have it holding this way. Or again, you can twist the hook up if you want to instead. Now, the figure does have, it seems like an upper torso ball joint. Although it's really kind of hard to kind of get in there to see what's going on. Legs do split out. There is a swivel cut at the top of the thigh. You may even see there's the cut at the top of the thigh. Figure has a hinge in the knee. Although it's really, it's really hard to get in there because, of course, the jacket just is in the, in the way of everything. But there's a hinge joint in the knee. You can also, uh, well, well, you can rotate the lower leg only by just a little bit. And then when it comes to his ankles, his ankles hinge up and down, back and forth, only just by a little bit. Of course, you can rotate all the way around. And the figure also does have toe articulation. Short of maybe just lightening the tone of his skin and maybe giving him a better means to stand. But again, you've got yourself the display stand, so we're not going to really count that. Nice looking Captain Hook, though. And again, like all about armoring, uh, like adoring himself, adorning, adorning himself in his fallen foe. The crocodile is a nice accent to his costume. Other than that, it's a classic looking hook from the head down to the toes. While there may not be any signs of Pita Pan, we've got ourselves a rather nice looking Captain Hook. Pulled in this case from Disney Mirrorverse. The first Mirrorverse figure, in fact, we looked at here on this channel, but based on the design of Captain Hook, I'm on board. Definitely on board for having a look at them more here on this channel. Captain Hook resonates for me. I've always been a big fan of this design of character. He's smug, he's cocky, and yet he's terrified of this crocodile that's chasing him down. Well, we obviously know who won here by the fact that Captain Hook is wearing his enemy all over his body. What a nice touch to include that as part of, part of his costuming. His costume isn't super bright. There's nothing really vibrant about the colors that they used and chose here for the figure. And yet there's still enough of resonating Captain Hook here that I recognize the character. 
Granted, the colors on his face I wish were a little bit lighter than what we get right here, but other than that, I just love the look of Captain Hook and certainly on board, like I said, for having a look at the rest of the D Disney Mirrorverse figures that we will be looking at in upcoming videos. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide this sample of the Disney Mirrorverse Captain Hook that we could have a look at here on this channel. Uh, have you guys collected any of the Disney Mirrorverse figures? If you have, let me know down below in the comments section which figures you've picked up. And certainly let me know if you guys would also like to see more Disney Mirrorverse figures here on this channel. Also as well, if you don't mind me asking, if you certainly enjoyed this video, why hit with a like. I'm not going to make you walk the plank, but certainly on the edge of that plank, there's a bell notification as well. So make sure you're turning on the subscribe button down below, you're turning on the bell notification, and making sure that you're of course coming back there's definitely gonna be a lot more mcfarland toys reviews coming your way and of course as always thanks for watching see you guys next time